everybody got your tickets? Yeah. Has everybody packed your bags? Yeah. You do know that this is a comedy show. Yeah. So it's a bit strange to pack your bags. Yeah. Is it a joke? Is it a train? Is it a joke? Is it a train? Is it a train? Is it a joke? Is it a joke? Is it a train? Is it a train? Is it a joke? It's both the joke and motive. The joke and motive. The joke a 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 joke the joke of, look at everybody, it's a pun away train! That's it, I'm on, yes! Good evening! As you can see, I've got nits. Malatis, 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 malatis. Well, that's the formalities over with. <laughs> Tonight I'm feeling calm and collected. By that I mean I'm not nervous and I've got a lift here. <laughs> Those seats look a bit ropey. Oh, ropey, is it? All right. <laughs> so I was on this train, I was like that. diddle a diddle a diddle a And eventually the bloke next to me said, can you stop doing that? <laughs> and then a man got on board and his knees were pointing together. I said, rickets, please. <laughs> Talk about understaffed, the buffet trolley went past once and that was only because we were going down a hill. <laughs> so I looked in my pocket and I found a, um, I found a, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> I found an old train ticket from 1979, a day return. That took me back. <laughs> Reminded me when I was outside, I heard, help, help. I looked round, there's a woman tied to the railway line. I untied her, she stood up. She told me she had a fight with her boyfriend. Then she thanked me for rescuing her. Then she got hit by a train. I should have made her step away from the track. <laughs> I once took part in a boxing match where two railway lines converge. I won on points. Come on. <laughs> I didn't do so well against Dracula. No, I couldn't beat the count. <laughs> Although I did rearrange the position of his teeth. Yes, I did a bit of fang shui. <laughs> Imagine if my entire act was like this. It is. Now we've all heard the theory that people look like their pets. Well, tonight I'm going to test that theory out. You, sir, have you got a llama? <laughs> just so you know, whoever's sitting there, I always say, have you got a llama? I just got lucky tonight. <laughs> Hit the music, please! for my internal organs. <laughs> I'd like to start tonight, I'd like to start tonight by performing a play in which I'm a fisherman who catches a cod and then takes mercy on it. And you, sir, are gonna play that cod. You don't wanna do it? All right, I'll let you off the hook. <laughs> so I said to this bloke, I said, I'm appearing in Hamlet at the Globe Theatre. He said, are you being facetious? I said, no, Polonius. <laughs> And then he handed me a box stuffed with Jamaican hair extensions. Dreadful. <laughs> but I get a lot of presents from my next door neighbours. Lovely Italian family called the Ratsis. Yeah, the dad's a bit annoying, paparazzi. <laughs> so I looked outside the window, I saw the Great Wall of China hovering above a rabbi. I thought, that's long overdue. <laughs> I'll tell you what is long overdue, going to a jazz playground. I went to a jazz playground, all they had was a slide and a seesaw. And as far as I'm concerned, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got a swing. <laughs> so I went to Sooty's Barbecue and I had a sweepstake. <laughs> and I met the man who invented windowsills. What a ledge. <laughs> and this antique dealer came up to me. He said, what do you think of the Chinese dynasty? I said, it was very badly dubbed. <laughs> I said, I'm going to open a shop in Saudi Arabia. He said, Dubai? I said, yes, and sell, yes. <laughs> but you know, my grandfather was a very controversial artist. Yeah, he designed the lions in Trafalgar Square. That didn't sound very cutting edge, but at the time, that really put the cat amongst the pigeons. 
So I said to this New Zealand bloke, I said, I'm going to a Swedish furniture shop. He said, does it look like Ikea? <laughs> I said, I'm going to buy some furniture polish. He said, pledge. I said, I'll give you my word. <laughs> Hit the music, please. Nervous legs. Nervous legs. Nervous legs. Nervous legs! Nervous legs! So... <laughs> I went to a joke shop. I said, what are you actually selling here? He said, nothing, we're not a real shop. <laughs> so I went to the Red Cross. I said, I want to buy a stretcher. He said, do you want to try it out first? I said, no, I don't want to get carried away. <laughs> he said, I noticed you've got quite a bit of muscle just there. I said, yeah, I've been doing a bit of bodybuilding on the side. Do you know, I used to have a lip ring. Oh, it's back. <laughs> so I went to the fashion show. I said, how come that catwalk is on a slight slope? He said, that's the Calvin Klein. <laughs> what a show I've got for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Later on, I shall be demonstrating how to use a road map. So we'll see how that unfolds. <laughs> and I shall be teaching you things like, what do you call a bundle of straw in a church? Christian Bale. <laughs> So I was reading the newspaper, I see the thief stealing t-shirts in order of size is still at large. <laughs> Hit the music, please! Is it a banana or is it a torch? Is it a banana or is it a torch? Is it a banana or is it a torch? The answer is, it's a torch that looks like a banana. I'd be naughty! I'd be naughty! I've just got a belt around the ear. You can do most of this act at home, to be honest, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Banag! That's bang out of order. I know what you're thinking to yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. You're thinking to yourselves, it's all very well, but when can we sing a song with Tim? Well, the answer is now. Hit the music, please! Here we go. I only know the one dance. It's easy. 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 It's easy, easy, easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Blimey, that was hard work, wasn't it? <laughs> Should have gone to the Specsavers. Now, let me tell you about this. Um, it's a long story. <laughs> Hello, my name's Bruce Willis, and I was in the Die Hard films, and I used to shoot at people. Yes, I was in Sixth Sense, I'm a film star. My name's Bruce Willis, I'm Bruce Willis. Sorry, I think I may have given you the wrong impression. <laughs> so I went to the binoculars shop, I tell you what, they saw me coming. <laughs> Of course, binoculars is plural, and the singular is telescope. <laughs> but I love language. This bloke said to me, he said, does every sentence have to contain a vegetable? I said, not necessarily. <laughs> and then there's words. The word mortar has two different meanings, as I discovered when the house I built blew itself up. <laughs> and in Mexico, they don't say Mexico, they say Mexico. Yeah, over there, they haven't got the film X-Men, they've got hook men. <laughs> they say things like, I've just bumped into my hook girlfriend. I was hoping that would get a bigger laugh. <laughs> I had great expectations. <laughs> so I went down to my local pub. Do you like local jokes? Yeah, me too. They're right on my street. 
I walked in, there's a very drunk man slumped in a chair and he looked at me, he said, he said, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a comedian. He said, I admire anyone who can stand up. <laughs> I said, I bet you can't name a single subject I don't have a joke about. He said, beavers. I said, damn. Do you know, I did a gig the other day and it went really badly and um, you could look slightly surprised. <laughs> I walked off stage, all I could hear was the sound of one person clapping and then I remembered I was wearing flip-flops. <laughs> Didn't make sense, the night before I did a gig to a whole load of reindeers, slayed them. <laughs> that move there, that improves the joke. <laughs> Not all of them, but you know, the first job I ever had in this business, I was playing the back half of a pantomime wasp. And I thought I was the bee's knees. <laughs> and the last time I did pantomime, on the first day, I was introduced to the seven dwarves, and I thought, this is really weird, because we were doing Aladdin. <laughs> and you know that song, Whistle While You Work? What if you're a glass blower? <laughs> but we're all getting older, aren't we? Do you know, I looked at my bathroom mirror this morning, and I saw my dad staring back at me. Then I realised it wasn't the bathroom mirror, it was my dad. I see Basil Brush has been diagnosed with an irregular heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom! <laughs> but you know, when I was 13 years old, every day I would trample on a bunch of grapes. It was just a teenage crush. Write that down. <laughs> but if I could be any age again, it'd be the age just before being a teenager. So imagine my excitement when I went to a health food shop and I actually found some pills and they said, B12. So I woke up this morning, I was lying on my side, I looked across at my clock and I thought, God, 6.45 already. Then I sat up and I realised I was staring at a tub of E45. <laughs> and the button on my pyjamas, the cotton, the, bu the button, the cotton, I've lost my thread. <laughs> I wonder what bed bugs say to each other at the end of the day. Night, night, don't let the, um, don't let the, um, we'll have a nice sleep anyway. I had a nice sleep the day after I won the Attic World Championships. Yes, you'll never guess this punchline. The Attic World Championships. I held my trophy aloft, there is. <laughs> but there's a world record for everything now, isn't there? I wonder if there's a world record for holding a pint of Guinness. And if there is, I wonder who the Guinness Guinness holder, world record holder is. <laughs> but you know, the other day I got lost in the jungle. Luckily I had a compass with me, so I was able to draw perfect circles with a pencil. <laughs> Spirit for the policeman without any rhythm. Hit the music, please. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. I can't understand it. I'm normally on the beat. <laughs> Let's hear it for the Hawaiian policeman. Hit the music, please. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Oh. Aloha, aloha, aloha. <laughs> I can't understand it. I'm normally on the beach. Do you know why policemen wear these helmets? It's because it's part of their uniform! <laughs> Do you know, I had a friend who was always taking a mickey at me for having a pay-as-you-go phone. He was always going, you've got a pay-as-you-go phone, you've got a pay-as-you-go phone. So eventually I took out a contract and I had him killed. <laughs> so I said to this bloke, I said, me and some friends have just been talking about you. He said, you disgust me. I said, yes, we did. <laughs> He said, next time you're asleep, I'm going to wake you up. I said, that's disturbing. <laughs> then I threw an apple at him and he threw some pastry at me and they collided in the centre of the room and created the perfect strudel. I love it when a flan comes together. <laughs> and who should walk into the room? Yes, that's right. Albert Einstein walked into the room wearing a pair of very thin stockings. Sheer genius. <laughs> He said, did you know 8% of the surface of the earth has never been rained on? I said, yes, it's called indoors. <laughs> he said, I love it when there's blossom on the trees, it's awesome. I said, I think you find it's spring. <laughs> but I recently did a lecture called How to Keep Up with Technology. And if you're interested in hearing it, I will be selling cassettes afterwards. <laughs> but pick cassettes, but people... Um, <laughs> People sometimes say to me, they say, Tim, why on earth do you, sorry, how on earth do you remember your act? <laughs> and the fact is, ladies and gentlemen, I've stored every joke I have ever written on this laptop.
I hope I get another gig out of that. <laughs> Do you know, I actually, I actually had a laptop in the 1970s. Yeah, well, it was an extra sketch. <laughs> but people say how great the internet is. It's not that great, is it? I asked it a question. I said, who hit the first tennis ball in this year's Wimbledon? And it said, server cannot be found. Then I looked up the song Too Shy Shy. I did a bit of Kajagoogling. <laughs> and I said to this bloke, I said, I've just seen Kajagoogoo in concert at the bottom of a mountain. He said, Base Camp. I said, You should see the drummer. <laughs> and I looked up, and there was the Queen halfway up a cliff face, and her safety rope was coming loose. I said, Your Highness. She said, What? Because <laughs> it sounds a bit like Your Highness. <laughs> But you know, I was talking to my mum and dad about their mums and dads, and they were telling me about their mums and dads before them, and their mums and dads before them, and I became fascinated by my personal history. So I went down to the local library, and I drew up my own family tree. And the amazing thing is, it's mums and dads all the way back. <laughs> I made this. I put a couple of dad and dads in there for a laugh. There's something slightly sad about sitting at home on your own drawing that. <laughs> Particularly the moment when I thought to myself, if I round off the corners, that'll make it funnier. <laughs> but human beings love to explore, don't we? Look at the lunar landings, the moon landings, as we, as we call them, I think, not the lunar landings, but the lunar module landed on the moon. Neil Armstrong got out and Buzz Aldrin stayed inside the lunar module. The reason they did it that way round was they were worried that if Buzz Aldrin got out, he'd never be able to get back in again through the entry phone. Buzz, who is it? Buzz, who is it? <laughs> Buzz, who is it? Buzz, who is it? <laughs> Buzz, who is it? Aldrin, what's your first name? Buzz, who is it? <laughs> Do you know, the other day, my local volcano exploded. Um, it says a lot about my axe. You're happy to take that on board without flinching. <laughs> Yes, your local volcano exploded somewhere in England. It destroyed everything except my lava lamp, strangely. And I did that joke the other day. A bloke came up to me afterwards. He said, strictly speaking, volcanoes don't explode, they erupt. I just thought it was interesting he picked me up on that and not the fact the lunar module had an entry phone. <laughs> Look at the size of that piece of bacon! I haven't got a joke for that yet. So I went to the beauty salon. I said, you told me to put cucumbers on my eyes and they won't balance. She said, slice them. <laughs> I said, it's very hard to talk with this lip gloss. She said, that's a Pritt stick. <laughs> I said, I'm about to play a Hergé character. I want you to darken my eyelashes. She said, tinting? I said, no, Captain Haddock. <laughs> Fake tans are very popular. I went to get a fake tan. It was so popular, I had to queue outside. Yeah, I got sunburnt. <laughs> and then it started snowing, and this woman came out, and she started giving birth on the snow. I said, what are you doing? She says, the weather. It brings out the child in me. <laughs> and then I got frostbite on the top of my mouth. Yeah, I didn't complain about it. No, stiff upper lip. And it happened to a friend of mine, I went to visit him in hospital, and the nurse said to me, she said, he's had an overdose of temporary tattoos. I said, thanks for laughing at that already, but that's not it. It's, uh, what I, although it'd be a lot easier to write this act if I just did the setups, that would be much easier. We could try that if you like. I went to the furniture shop, I said, have you got any chairs? He said, yes. <laughs> anyway, I was designing some lino, and a werewolf walked in. 
Anyway, I was in the hospital, that's where I was, in the hospital, and the nurse said to me, she said, he's had an overdose of temporary tattoos. I said, where is he? She said, he's been transferred. Let's move on. It's... I was so upset, I went to my mum and dad's house and I poured my heart out over a cup of tea, which made it taste horrible. <laughs> Hit the music, please. Waiting can sometimes be Lots of fun <laughs> But not always This is, um, this is really, this is really, really creepy. Watch this, watch. <laughs> Do you know, I saw an incredible thing today, actually. I was in my back garden. I saw a toucan. That's quite rare, isn't it, to see a toucan in your back garden? Anyway, I got a bit closer. I realised it wasn't a toucan. It was a magpie eating a banana. <laughs> Hit the music, please. Nervous chin Nervous chin So my mum said to me That wasn't my mum, it was my dad Yeah, mum, dad, it's all relative <laughs> When I was a young boy, my dad said to me He said, Tim, he said, you can be anything you want to be in life The sky's the limit Which made me sad, because I wanted to be an astronaut And when I was at school, the school bully used to make me rub my head against a giant piece of sandpaper. Yeah, I was no match for him. <laughs> and then I got a job on a plum farm, and the owner was actually called Mr Plum. Although it was spelt with two M's, it was Mr Plum. <laughs> then after that, I got a job as a litter removal man. I didn't have any training, I just thought I'd pick it up as I go along. And then after that, I was selling helium balloons at the same time as being the pilot of a hot air balloon. And it was actually really hard trying to hold those two jobs down. <laughs> and then after that, I went to this fancy dress party and there was a man dressed as a helium balloon and he was stuck to the ceiling. I thought he'd let himself go. <laughs> but you know when someone's lazy, you say, well, he's a lazy bones. He's a lazy bones. That's an incorrect phrase, isn't it? Lazy bones. You can't blame the bones, it's the muscles. Lazy bones. That's like saying I run out of petrol, stupid roof rack. <laughs> and now I've got a job helping out a one armed typist whenever she wants to do capital letters. <laughs> it's shift work. <laughs> Hit the music, please. I bought a massive motorbike. I had to sell that and get a smaller one I had to sell that and get a smaller one I had to sell that and get a smaller one I had to sell that and get a pepper mill So this chocolate went past at 100 miles an hour It was a Ferrari Rocher Luke said to me, he said, do you want to buy a raffle ticket? I said, what's first prize? He said, first prize is a toilet. I said, what's last prize? He said, last prize is a toilet. I thought, I'm in a win-lose situation here. <laughs> do you know, I recently sold my house on eBay. I don't advise you to do that. Pretty much all the money I made went on postage. <laughs> and a complete stranger has just moved in two doors down from me, and I don't like it one bit, because two doors down from me, that's the spare room. Romance is a wonderful thing. I'd like to sing about it for you right now. Hit the music, please. I knew a couple from Warsaw. They loved with all their heart. Then one day they split up. And now they're just poles apart. <laughs>
Yes, love. Love is a bit like an ornament on your mantelpiece. Sometimes it makes you happy and sometimes it reminds you not to buy things when you're on holiday. <laughs> the Beatles said, all you need is love, but it's quite handy having a car, isn't it? <laughs> I met my girlfriend in a jacuzzi. Yeah, she was a bubbly girl. She was a nudist. I wore the trousers in that relationship. <laughs> then after that, I started going out with a blob of mustard. I say went out, she was a bit on the side. Have you ever written a text to your girlfriend and sent it to your mum by mistake? I did it the other way round, yeah. I accidentally told my girlfriend that I loved her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the guitar behind me belongs to me and I'm going to play it. Let's have a big round of applause, please, for the guitar. And please keep applauding until I'm back in position. The guitar! Thank you very much. Sorry, it's slightly out of tune. No idea. <laughs> I'd like to start with my impression of a booming economy. Economy! Do you know, I actually, I actually had my first driving lesson today and the instructor said to me, he said, he said, it's very good, but you've picked up one or two bad habits. First of all, let's deal with the drinking. <laughs> he said, have you held a valid driving license for the last five years? I said, no, I'll keep it in a drawer. <laughs> this first song is called Ode to My Girlfriend's Mother. Thank you. Ode to my girlfriend's mother. Ten thousand pounds. <laughs> row, row, row your boat in a famous biblical sea. Galilee, 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 Galilee. <laughs> Lazy clamp. Oh, sorry. Idle vice. This next song is called This Is The Noise You Hear. Thank you. This is the noise you hear. This is what you hear. When a cat slips on some ice. What? <laughs> this is the noise you hear. This is what you hear. When a dog remembers something sad. Ooh. <laughs> this is the noise you hear. This is what you hear. When a man watering his plants finishes off a bottle of beer then accidentally points the hose at his own face. <sighs> Ooh. This is the noise you hear This is what you hear When a car screeches to a halt Hits a small goat And makes a witch laugh <laughs> This is the noise you hear this is what you hear When an audience isn't expecting a song to end <laughs> Have you ever been distracted When you were meant to be doing something else? Incidentally I was at home today and heard a knock on the front door and I thought, that's odd, because I was standing in the front garden. <laughs> I said, come out! <laughs> and out stepped Prince, the diminutive singer. 
Actually, I think he's American. <laughs> and I noticed he only had one leg. I said, are you looking for your footprints? <laughs> he said, I've got terrible circulation. I said, ah, yes, purple vein, purple vein. <laughs> he said, I feel really, really sick. He said, can you mend my washing machine for me? I said, of course I can. He said, what does that button do there? I said, that is the cycle formerly known as rinse. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone you know? But you didn't want to talk to them. So you pretended that you hadn't seen them. Well, let me tell you something It doesn't work if you're in their house <laughs> The guitar! <laughs> so I went to the doctors, I said, whenever I pass from one country to another, I have to get drunk He said, you're borderline alcoholic <laughs> I said, I've got a shooting pain in my arm. He said, since when? I said, since someone shot me in the arm. <laughs> he said, what do you prefer, custard creams or jammy dodgers? I said, either. He said, I thought so. You're a biscuit schizophrenic. <laughs> I said, whenever I hear a diagnosis, my leg twitches violently. He said, I found out why that is. I said, go on. He said, you kick yourself when I tell you. But I blame my mum and dad for my health. Do you know what? I think they wanted me to smoke. Yeah, for my 10th birthday, they gave me some bike sheds. <laughs> so I got a job as a psychiatrist, and a man walked in. He said, I want to put an end to disappointment. I said, this is the only appointment I can give you. <laughs> I said, what's wrong? He said, whenever I spell a word, I get halfway through it, and the person I'm with finishes it off. I said, how do you spell look? He said, L-O. I said, OK. I said, how do you spell Arctic? He said, A-R-C-T. I said, I see. <laughs> I said, how do you spell rhythm? He said, R-H-Y-T. I said, hmm. <laughs> and then a graffiti artist walked in. He had paint all over his foot. I said, what's wrong? He said, I sprayed my ankle. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've only ever done one burglary. And I was caught because I made too much noise, but you know, I was shown how to smash a window in complete silence. And what you do is you get a double page of newspaper and you cover it in golden syrup and then you stick it on the window. And when you smash it, it comes off in little bits, makes no noise at all. The problem was, someone overheard me hammering the lid back on the syrup. <laughs> Hit the music, please! Is it a boxing glove or is it a shoe? Is it a boxing glove or is it a shoe? Is it a boxing glove or is it a shoe? The answer is, it's a torch. That's a torch as well! That is Torture. <laughs> Water torture. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I, I absolutely love um, um, aerial photographs, and I think you'll agree, that's a beauty. <laughs> oh, not much of a laugh there. Just see whether or not it's a bit more of a... That's quite good there, but not, nothing much there. Anything over there? Almost nothing at all there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Oh, that's turned sarcastic down there. Well, that normally gets a better reception. Look at that. Mountaineering. That's
That's the last of those. Yeah. End of the range. I think I've peaked. You did really well. Everest. So this, um, you know, when I, when I was a hitman, um, this bloke said, he said, I want you to kill my physiotherapist. I said, don't shoot the massager. <laughs> and when I was in the army, me and the other riflemen formed our own disco band. We were called Earth, Wind and Fire! <laughs> so I got sent to prison and a bloke came up to me. He said, watch out for one-eyed Rick. I said, is he violent? He said, no, he keeps bumping into people. <laughs> Then he asked me if I'd join the escape committee. Yeah, I'm glad I got out of that. <laughs> so I went to an open prison and there was no one there. <laughs> Just one bloke like that. He was halfway through a long stretch. <laughs> now I know I'm not much of a dancer. I've got a friend who's got two left feet. Well, he would have, he's a horse. <laughs> I think it's time for a bit of a break. Hit the music, please. I love the smell of freshly cut graphs. <laughs> I made this. You've got to draw the line somewhere. That shows the improvement in women's tennis. Yeah, it's a Steffi graph. <laughs> Talking of dangerous sports, I think a parachute jump was the scariest thing that I have ever, ever refused to do. Actually, I did once do a parachute jump, and of course they attach you to the instructor, don't they? And you jump out together. So I was in the aeroplane, and they attached me to this bloke, and we jumped out, and it was really frightening, because halfway down, he said, how long have you been an instructor? <laughs> but I've done a lot of dangerous things. I was on a tropical island, and I walked on coals. I actually did it, I walked on coals. Yeah, admittedly they weren't lit. <laughs> but that's an uneven surface, you can roll your ankle on that. Then they lit it and said, do you want to walk on hot coals? I said, no, I don't. He said, come on, it's great fun. I'm stumpy. <laughs> I said, I don't want to do it. He said, surely you've heard the phrase, feel the fear and do it anyway. I said, surely you've heard the phrase, get an ambulance, my legs are on fire. <laughs> anyway, you shouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, you've got to separate them for recycling. <laughs> Which reminds me, I went to the vet. I said, my baby goose is drinking too much water. He said, gosling. I said, non-stop. <laughs> Then Victor Meldrew came up to me, he said, everyone says you misquote catchphrases. I said, I don't understand it. <laughs> and the other day I lost my tree, so I nailed a picture of it to a dog. <laughs> but I did it, ladies and gentlemen, I did it. I walked on hot coals and it made a right mess of my flippers, let me tell you that. And when I got back to the hotel, I left a massive carbon footprint. I went to a tug of war competition and I pulled. <laughs> Hit the music, please. Why do my memories, good or bad, make me cry? They tug at my heartstrings as I watch the years go by. Guess who made that? <laughs> Not me, actually. No, I borrowed it off some friends, Romans and countrymen. <laughs> What's that for? <laughs> Here's one. There's another one. <laughs> Do you know, I'd like to teach the world to sing. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's got the whole hand. <laughs> Do 
Look at the size of this water pistol here, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Hit the music, please. <laughs> Nervous audience. <laughs> I, oh, oh. I've always had a loose grip on reality. Today's the day the teddy bears have their panic attack. <laughs> so this boxer came up to me. He said, I could kill you. I said, pardon? He said, I'm a heavyweight. I said, I could stop the documents blowing off your desk. He said, what? I said, I'm paperweight. <laughs> he said, I'll see you at the way in. I said, I'll see you at the way out. He said, I'm going to make you eat your words. I said, sticky toffee pudding. <laughs> he said, what do you actually know about boxing? I said, I met Mike Tyson. He said, Tyson sucks. I said, that's Dyson. <laughs> I've just been on a once in a lifetime holiday. I tell you what, never again. <laughs> I got off the aeroplane, my leg was going. <laughs> Deep vein trombonist. <laughs> I went to a jumble sale in India. It was a bring Mumbai. <laughs> I said to this bloke, I said, I've just been to Australia. He said, who did you fly with? I said, I don't know the names of all the other passengers. <laughs> Mind you, I had a great time. I swam with dolphins when I was out there. I actually had to dress up as a dolphin to do it, which to be honest, I needed like a hole in the head. <laughs> but we had a great time. Yeah, me and those dolphins, we just clicked. Have you just arrived, madam? You've just arrived now? Have you? Well, listen, I'm, I'm nothing if not thorough. Let's start again. <laughs> Do you know, I went, out for, I went out for a drink with a kangaroo. He didn't buy a single beer all night long. Yeah, talk about short arms and long pockets. <laughs> I bought a boomerang off a ghost. I bet that'll come back to haunt me. <laughs> So I was on this aeroplane, halfway through the flight, the pilot was replaced by a Chinese waiter in order to make sense of the punchline. <laughs> and he came out over the tannoy system, he said, as we begin our descent, I'm not going to turn off all of the cabin lights, I'm just going to dim some. <laughs> Hit the music, please. <laughs> Little piece of carpet, no one seems to want you at all. Little piece of carpet, you're just too small. Where can you go? Nobody knows. Little piece of carpet. Hello, everybody, I'm Arthur, I'm a jewelry box. I feel empty inside and I'm just five inches across. Little piece of carpet, now you've got somewhere you can be. Little piece of carpet, Arthur is your new family. Little piece of carpet. Let me out. Little piece of carpet. Let me out. I feel trapped. What's the point of looking for something all your life when you don't really want it? Little piece of carpet, I think you like being a victim. I don't fully understand that myself. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure I got such a good deal on these night vision goggles. I absolutely love pictures of tomatoes. I really do, yeah. William Tyndale, Joan of Arc, two martyrs. There they are. <laughs> so I went to the supermarket. I said, are you sure that sign's correct? It says 241 pork pies for three pounds. He said, no, that's two for one. <laughs> then my 
grandpa walked up to me, he said, do you want a Werther's? I thought, it's original. <laughs> he said, you never visit me anymore. Why don't you hop on a bus? I said, because I fall over on corners. <laughs> it's not much of a joke when you've got to follow it with a mime. <laughs> this bloke said to me, so I'm a mime artist. I said, he kept that quiet. <laughs> so I was standing at a bus stop. He said, he said, what number are you waiting for? I said, I'd be happy with one. But it's a great way to travel by bus, and it? it's amazing how many people are murdered at the beginning of cycle lanes. Yeah, they've got that outline of the bike on the ground, haven't they? <laughs> I was in a chat room today, it was a live chat room, so you could actually see the person you're talking to. It was a pub, I was in a pub. <laughs> Sometimes I get up in the morning and I read a bit of Agatha Christie, and then maybe I uh, make some chocolates, and I read a bit more Agatha Christie, I make some more chocolate. Belgian waffle! So I went to the restaurant and the waiter had a mouthful. I said, what are you eating? He said, muffin. I said, yes, you are. I can see you are. <laughs> I said, what soup do you do? He said, say gin onion. I said, gin onion. <laughs> I've been meaning to drop that joke for a long time. I keep it in because of the variety of different expressions it gets. <laughs> anyway, I looked round, there's a gravy cube giggling. I said, you're a laughing stock. Come on. <laughs> he said, I am gravy, I'm not gravy. I said, you're an oxomoron. <laughs> I went to this Christian restaurant, it was called The Lord Giveth, and it also does takeaway. I walked in, I saw these two vicars arguing over a loaf of communion bread. I said, all right, break it up. <laughs> Do you know, I actually use a Moroccan rice dish to help me count. It's my abacuscus. <laughs> I'm going to attempt something now, ladies and gentlemen. Now, out of interest, have you got a mobile phone with you? Yes, have you got a mobile phone with you? Yeah, have you got one with you? Yeah, have you got one with you? Okay. If you four want to take out your mobile phones and come and stand along the edge of the stage just here. My phone only works in a church. Yeah, I'm praying as you go. <laughs> Knock here, and the door will be opened. <laughs> the other day I got a text from heaven. That was a godsend. <laughs> that's great. If you just all get a bit closer, that's right, and get close together. There we are. And if you hold your hand up, hold it, the phone up towards me with your right hand. That's right. There we are. Brilliant. Okay, great. Just hold it up as high as it goes. As high as it, oh, that is as high as you go. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's great. Okay. <laughs> so we'll see how we do. This doesn't always work. We'll have a go at this. Here we go. Here we go. That's a promising start. <laughs> okay, here we go. Bit higher up, please. <laughs> yes, it works! <laughs> Hit the music, please! It's in a torch, yes. <laughs> oh, look at that, look. Traction man. <laughs> Do you know, at the moment I'm manning the dessert helpline. <laughs> Morangia Lord. <laughs> like that matters for the joke. <laughs> He's got it the wrong way round. That's why it's not funny. <laughs> My impression of the Phantom of the Opera after ten pints. I'm out the face. <laughs> Ladies and I'd like to illustrate for you the suffering caused by junk mail. <laughs> please, please. Oh, sorry, that's the suffering caused by monk jail. Don't want to worry you, but that goes down six foot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been a sensational audience. You've given me the gift of laughter tonight in, in patches, and I, I, <laughs> I feel like I want to give something back to you. So uh, what I've actually done, I've, uh, I've enclosed a gag in this envelope here. Um, so, uh, yeah. oh, you can't take a joke, can you? <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, oh, that's on the floor. I don't want it back. I don't do dirty jokes. <laughs> Actually, would you mind passing me that? Just actually pass that back to me, please. Thanks very much. Here we go. Cheers, thank you. I mean, if you're on the end there, madam, if you'd like to take this for me. Here we go, take this. If you'd like to walk back and give it to the person on the end of the seventh row. Would you mind just walking back and give it to the person on the end of the seventh row? That's great. Oh, sorry, not seventh. Second. Oh, you've taken a joke too far. <laughs> Give this woman a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'll, I'll leave you with this, because to be honest with you, um, it doesn't belong to me, I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> Tomorrow I shall be practising how to drive three funeral cars, so rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. <laughs> And I've got to organise a funeral for an elephant. Yeah, that's a big undertaking. <laughs> Remember when my grandfather died, he left me all of his effects. It was a smoke machine and a wah-wah pedal. <laughs> Remind me, what is it that makes someone look fat? Is it horizontal lines or vertical lines or eating too much food? <laughs> so I was standing on the beach, I walked into the waves holding a tub of taramasalata. Bloke said to me, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking a dip in the sea. So I was steering a yacht with my stomach muscles, abseiling. <laughs> and this farmer came up to me, he said, I've got 68 sheep, can you round them up for me? I said, sure, 70. <laughs> but you know, my girlfriend gave me an incredible present the other day. It was a large bowl of custard with a diamond sitting on top. Yeah, still hasn't sunk in. But I've got to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think I'm going to be doing this job for much longer. Aww. A little too long of a pause and not enough of you. <laughs> what concerns me is that one day I'll wind up an old man and he'll attack me. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, um, I will be selling that afterwards. Um, I've only got the one, so be quick. <laughs> The cellophane was put on by a psychiatrist. Yeah, the shrink wrapped. <laughs> I'll also be doing a bit of signing. So if you're deaf, come and say hello. <laughs> and I'll be selling this book as well. Let me just read a bit from this. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, what better way to end a show like tonight than with a written apology? I mean, with... Um, with a tribute to the Bee Gees, and that's how I'd like to finish. Hit the music, please.
I'm not sure if anyone said more, but here I am. <laughs> this, um, this may come as a surprise to you, but I never used to like broccoli. <laughs> but I found over time, it's grown on me. <laughs> I paid someone £150 to make me this. <laughs> so I'm not going to take it off yet. <laughs> I was, um, I, 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 I can't speak broccoli. <laughs> There's actually a design fault with this, because these flaps completely cover the ears, so as far as I'm concerned, this may well be getting end-to-end -end laughs. There's no way of knowing. <laughs> £150, how is that possible? Mind you, this, this jacket potato cost £80. How can that be £80? It's a torch as well. <laughs> You've been such a fantastic audience that tonight I've decided to waive my fee. <laughs> How long have I been on? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? You've got to meet your targets. To be lit. There's, there's only one thing left for me to do now, and that is to uh, clear up my props. <laughs> Clearing up my props, now the show is done. Put them in a box, one by one, reminiscing <laughs> as I go along. Clearing up my props, now the show is done Put them in a box, one by one Reminiscing as I go along Oh, look at that, it's a torch 